Is this what? Knife Show 20. Knife Show 20. Knife what? Show 20. Greg. Yeah. Uh, no, I checked the records. Corbin's out of town. He can't be here today. I looked at the production notes. It said TC and Greg. <clears throat> yeah, wrong Greg. Yes. More than one Greg. Wrong Greg. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What is happening, man? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Folks, we are here for Knife Show 20, and I'm sitting here with Greg from the Clip Point. And, uh, dude, it is so good to have you on the show. Yeah, man. I'm excited. This has been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Gosh, we've been playing this forever, so. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got some really cool stuff to show everybody. Before we get started, though, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell. So you will know when we drop really cool videos. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to The Clip Point across all social media, all right? And uh, now, without further ado, why don't we light it up? Let's light it up, baby. Yeah! (laughs) All right. So we've got a lot of really cool stuff to get to, um, and we've got a lot of news. So uh, when this airs, uh, as we are filming right now, Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be going uh, for uh, a campfire co-op weekend with uh, Georgia Bushcraft this weekend. Um, We're going to be on the road um, having some fun out there in the wilderness and uh, just talking with some people in the industry and uh, having a good time. Um, now this will actually air after we've gotten back from that. And there's going to be a lot of content coming out from that. We're going to be having a lot of fun and, um, we've got a lot of new product in the store and it's really hard to bring all of that to you. We're going to be featuring some stuff briefly. Um, we're also going to be talking about some stuff more in depth because we've got some specific product features that we're going to be putting out coming up. Um, but we've got so much new stuff that it's really hard to get around to. And, uh, that's, that's a welcome change what a plug we, for the store. Yeah. You know, we have so many people engage online with the clip point and one recommendation, um, fill up your cart at smkw.com and have your cart ready to go yep. before you come in. So that way you can kind of hit your highlights uh-huh. and then you'll find something else that you want. So exactly. Uh, it's a cool adventure. Uh, I'm excited to, to be able to be fortunate enough to do this with you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, um, let's get right into it. We're, we're going to feature a whole bunch of stuff on the show today. Now, the last thing we're going to do is going to be our picks. But one brand that we haven't talked a lot about recently has been Victorinox. Um, and we've got a lot of new stuff in uh, just this month mm-hmm. um, from our Victorinox lines. And one line that everyone has been loving the last few years has been their a Special Edition line. And we were talking about this before. They do an incredible job with these. Um, I love their a handles. Uh, I love the durability of them. I love the... Uh, corrosion resistance of them um and they of course make them in uh all three limited edition sizes we're going to go over all three of those and i'll let you hold those up for the camera right there cool i mean just the finish work is incredible i love what they do with the logo yeah that's like uh, what do we call that the uh, the instagram angle yep absolutely uh if you go on clip point you'll see that a lot of our stuff has that angle uh definitely it's it's got a little bit of drama it's got a lot of polish to it but what a functional serious knife oh yeah now that one is the hunter pro a locks limited edition 2022 that one's coming in at 130 um and of course it's coming in with their stainless steel blade four inch stainless steel spear point blade with a satin finish Manual folder, lock back, uh, handles are embossed and anodized Alox aluminum with that 2022 limited edition stamp and the stainless steel tip up pocket clip. And that's going to be. Um, and the lanyard. And yes, it's and so the lanyard too. To yeah. Lanyard Absolutely. You you don't like lanyards at all, do you? Listen, I, I, it's like <laughs> Santa Claus and I'm walking around. I jingle. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Love the lanyards. So we've not only got the Hunter Pro, but we've also got the Pioneer X limited edition right there. And that's coming in with the same type of Alox handles. Um, And it's the same uh, 
pioneer pattern that you're used to from them. Uh, that one's coming in at $75 and uh, a, a great value for a limited edition. And we know there's a lot of people out there that actually collect Victorinox. Um, I've got quite a few in my collection. I use most of them, but um, I think these are, I mean, the fit and finish on these is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it really um, is. And, uh, I love anytime something's dated from the manufacturer. Yeah. Absolutely. I really like that. It's it makes it touch. special. And uh, honestly, looking back on it, so this is one of the things that as I get older, mm -hmm. um, I appreciate more. I like it being dated so that I can remember around the time period that I got it. That's, that's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. Because a lot of times I'm like, when did I get that? I don't, I don't remember. And I'm trying to go through my Rolodex in my brain, but a lot of it seems to be scratched off and all that crap. So, so. even though Case does put the date on the box i've actually started keeping the receipts um in the box of all my knives now so yep. that i can try and remember that as well because yep. as the collection gets deep you're kind of like i, I, d I don't, don't remember yep i don't remember when i got this yeah so that one's coming in at 75 right there i, I love so one of the interesting things that i like about a swiss army knife is just the execution of of the quality of the product. And, and, and I know it's a small thing, but I've always liked how the scissors actually work. Yeah. Like you'll go and get, you know, maybe a brand that's not Swiss Army. And, you know, the scissors might work for a while, but I'll tell you that's heavy stock. They come sharp. Yep. The spring is strong. It's just really, really good. And, you know, for me, it, it's about snipping threads. Yep. Sometimes, exactly. You know, and so well, that's what I use them for, and that's why I like having one of these in my bag all yeah. the time. Yeah. So. Well, and and scissors is one of those things, and we've talked about it on the channel too. It, it's one of those things that you never realize how useful of a tool scissors are until you actually have them when you need them. That's right. And I mean, the accessibility on a on a Victorinox on a Swiss Army knife, whether it's like the Pioneer or a Huntsman or like this classic SD right here. Um, and that's the third one in this series. Uh, having those scissors there when you need them uh, is invaluable. It, it really saves is. you time. It saves you effort. And you don't realize how much you actually use them until you have them every day and have access to them. And it's like, wow, how did I ever live without scissors on me? That's a great point. And you know how we try and evangelize the mm. knife community and get people and family and friends to carry a knife. Yeah. Rule number nine, right? Absolutely. It kind of harkens like that. It's more like um, you never really know how much you need a knife until you need a knife. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kind of the same thing with uh, the scissors on a blade. But hey, look how dainty that is. I love that. Oh, size. I love it. I mean, that's perfect for a keychain. It really it is. It really is. Yeah. So that's going to be the uh, the new limited edition 2022 series. This one, uh, the classic SD is coming in at 43. So 43, 75, and 130 for the Hunter Pro. Nice. Um, and we've got those in, of course, limited edition. So there's limited numbers of those. Um, so once they're gone, they're gone. Yep. We're not getting any more of those in. Um, also in the realm of Victorinox, we've also got our SMKW exclusive. Easter patterns. Um, what? Yes. So we've got these in the classic SD and the Tinker. Uh, they're coming home with me. My <laughs> girls are going to fall in love with this. Oh, I didn't even know this was happening. Yeah. Are you so kidding? We've got the uh, Spring Chicks. How cool is that? Let's see if I can get the uh, glare, less glare. There we go. And we've also Are got the Easter butterflies right here, oh, that's which crazy. is very apropos for our area, being uh, Dolly Pardon's home yes. county here and uh, hometown. So the uh, the butterfly Easter uh, models right there, wow. and of course those come in at thirty one ninety nine for the uh, Tinker, uh, twenty one ninety nine for the classic SDs, um, and that's you know standard across the board for all of our uh, Victorinox exclusives that we have here at SMKW. That's awesome. And those are available, and all of these knives that we're showing you today are available in our store and online. We're going to put the links to all of them in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these, all you got to do is scroll down. You can look at the timestamp in the description and click on the link right there. It's going to take you right to our website where those are. So Got two little girls. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to flip out of Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, so, we, uh, like I said before, we've got a lot of new stuff. And... Um, uh, 
in in keeping with one of the things that we've been looking at a lot, and one of the things that I've noticed I've been adding more to my collection of has been traditional folders. Absolutely. Lately, mm-hmm. um, I've actually kind of steered not necessarily steered away but i haven't been buying as many modern folders and i've been Mm -hmm. adding more traditional folders um and i guess uh my dad being gone now and me inheriting his collection and my grandfather's collection and i guess thinking back and reminiscing back about the knives that they carried and seeing when you get a nostalgic feeling a tactical knife won't do it exactly exactly And uh, that's one thing that I love about Case's Pocket Worn series. And we just got this one in. This is the navy blue Pocket Worn Stockman right here. And uh, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. There you go. And I I love their Pocket Worn series. And actually, uh, my pawpaw, and I I actually inherited this one, Um, he had a Pocket Worn from 2010 that was the, the last knife that he owned and the last knife that he carried regularly. And um, it just, it reminds me, that finish now reminds me so much of him. And, uh, I mean, I love the pocket-worn finish. It makes it look really classic, really nice. And, of course, they do a fantastic job. Their artisans do um, making those look worn, that jig bone. And I love bone handles. I, uh, I always have. This one's coming in, obviously, with their True Sharp Surgical Steel on the clip point. Um, the sheep's foot and the spay blades, mm-hmm. um, classic stockman pattern, and that one's coming in in the commemorative ten as well. Um, so you get the commemorative ten and the stockman inside, and uh, I think those are coming in at sixty seven ninety nine. Nice. So I mean, with the commemorative ten, it only it's only adding like two dollars from the uh, normal, you know case pocket worn so it's a great value with something yeah. to, for a gift and absolutely the ability to have something that feels special in yeah hand, right yeah i really dig that thing darren yes uh yeah pastor darren uh definitely does not prefer the blue so every time i post <laughs> blue i tag him he <laughs> really enjoys red um yeah but look I just one of the nice things about the knives and and in bone is just you can't get the variation of color any other way yeah just natural materials you can't simulate it right it's just beautiful and and look at the i just like the the smooth design oh yeah you know what i mean it just you get those rounded corners those rounded edges Mm -hmm. yeah really really well finished product so i love case knives obviously a huge collector for us so that's great beautiful knife yeah and uh kind of switching gears a little bit going to the opposite end of the spectrum uh one of the companies that uh has been doing really well for us in the last uh year and a half um and we when we first started carrying their knives um i guess a lot of people weren't really sure how they were going to do because a lot of people Mm -hmm. didn't really know a lot about them yeah um but qsp has done a phenomenal job um I love the craftsmanship. Um, they're very simple. They're very straightforward, but they've got a lot of different options. Mm-hmm. And we've got this. Uh, we've got this osprey here that we just got a bunch in. Wow, that one is heavy. It is. Oh my gosh, I haven't actually picked that one up yeah. until just now. Um, but uh, we just got these in. Um, and this is the osprey. So we've got these in a bunch of different ones. We've got them with micarta handles. We've got them with the bronze handles. We've got them with brass handles. We've also got them with the G10 infused carbon fiber handles. Wow. Um, we've got them with the black stone wash finish blade as well as the satin finish blade. So there's a bunch of different variations. They're ranging anywhere from $57 to $64. Um, 14C28 in steel. And... Um, you know, if you follow the channel, you've noticed that uh, I just recently posted a video on AEBL steel. And uh, you'll know that AEBL is basically identical to um, to 13C26. And 13C26 was actually the precursor to 14C28N. Um, and they're all very similar steels. Fantastic. Uh, 14C28N is a Sandvik steel. And uh, really dig their steel choices, dig their materials on their handles, and the options that you can get. 
Um, the Sandvik steels take a heck of an edge. They do. I know they it's, really they, do. they're so easy to polish mm-hmm. and to really use leather and get that edge just popping sharp. Yeah. And and I, I just love the Sandvik steels. It, it, look, I like the wire pocket clip. Yeah. I, I really do. It's it's like a deep carry. And you know, just their attention to detail was spot on. Look at the mm-hmm. carbon fiber back here for your little lanyard. Yep. Right? Just wonderful. A little flipper. And mm-hmm. the action is great. Yep. I mean, for the money. And I love the fact that QSP knows that there's different people. Different people can fall within different budgetary constraints. Yes. So they have, you know, the same knife mm-hmm. in so many different variations to cater to all the different. If budgets you love that a design, you can find your home. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's, I think that's indicative of a company that knows their product and also knows their customers well mm-hmm. enough to know that they want to provide something for everyone. Yes. And they do a really good job at doing that because, I mean, you can go anywhere from uh, this with 14C28N and, I mean, with really good materials um, for relatively an inexp- mm-hmm. inexpensive price, or Certainly. you can bump up to something with titanium frame lock yeah, handles exactly. and S35VN steel, and it's a little bit more expensive, a little bit more refined. But still present a great value for everything that you get, right? Exactly. Yeah, it still absolutely. has the same ergonomics. I, I, I just I dig what they're doing. And, of course, they, we've, got the, we've got the new sticker. Thanks, Super Greg. Have a knife day. Uh, Have a knife day. It's wonderful. With the penguin on there. Hey, listen, uh, Super Greg. Uh, is Super Greg in the building? Do we have? Yeah, yeah. Since uh, I took the uh, your your dishonor of of taking your chair, I figure I can at least. Uh, <laughs> I figured this was positive. I'll never let you find me. Oh, there. that's right. Yeah. The Super Greg. So, yeah. So we we can have this in honor of you. I had this made for him. Um, just you know, he's great. Gives me access to you guys at all hours and. Uh, you know, so there you go. They did a good job. I mean, that's spitting image. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, in keeping with the QSP theme, um, another brand that we've just started carrying recently is Finch Knives, and mm. they've been extremely popular on the internet. Um, and Finch Knives are actually designed here in the U.S., made by QSP, and uh, you can really tell in the quality. We talked about the quality from QSP. Um, and we just got the new Finch Roadrunner in. These are up and available in store and online, and uh, in all three different materials. And I, I love the designs that Finch does. I love their planning yeah. because you can see them in advance, and you know what they're going to come out with, but you don't really know what it's going to feel like until you actually get it in hand. And you were talking about the bone yeah. on that and, yeah. and the I, detail and it, it goes back to what we were talking about with case yeah you can you can execute bone in a good way or not so good way yeah and they really did a great job i love it when you have a little bit of red a little bit of white a little bit of black kind of all mixed in and yeah. all of those little colors and textures and it doesn't turn out pink that's yeah. the hard part you start messing with some of the jigging and polishing, it'll go pink as it fades to white. Mm-hmm. And they did such a great job of that not happening here. Nothing wrong with pink, but when you want red, you want red. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. And really, Finch does a great job with melding um, modern and traditional elements. I actually yeah. dig that. Yeah. Um, to have this kind of stiletto Italian style with... You know the sort of modern ball bearing, yep. fast. You know, and, and that's, then you've got those little elements. I, 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 I'm right there with you. I really appreciate what they've done with that because, and you've seen it with a lot of their models. They with some of their models that look like Barlow's, yeah, um, but they're flippers, exactly. And I, I really dig that. I mean, it's it's kind of got that Pena type feel to it. Even too. Case is starting to really mm-hmm. bring out some pocket clips on traditional knives exactly like a trapper with a pocket clip is a is a great idea I think. yeah and uh, people are really getting into that and uh these finches come extremely sharp 154 cm which is are you a kidding? phenomenal I didn't even know it was 154 yeah. phenomenal blade steel uh great you know intermediate blade steel um it's one of those that 
For sharpen ability though, stainless capability, edge retention, it's kind of like a super four forty. Yeah, and um, it's a great do it all. A, it, it really is because you know you're going to be able to use this knife with confidence that says, "Hey, I'm not going to spend near as much time on a stone, yeah. or be as concerned about cleaning it off." Because exactly, it'll bring the edge will come back. One fifty four cm to me is probably in you know really in that mid range, just the. One of the greatest steels. Yeah. You know, granted, other ones can do more, but they require more effort yeah. in maintaining. Well, and it's like we always talk about, especially with our blade steel series, we talk about, um, and I've mentioned before, how with every blade steel, if you gain something, if you gain an attribute somewhere, you always, you always have to else. give up something somewhere it, it, you else. You never, you, there is, that's why there is no perfect exactly. steel, right? And that's why I think 154 CM is a great balance of everything. It, it doesn't do uh, better at any one thing than anything else, but it does everything really good. It does really everything good. really good. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the nice things, and I talk about this in videos, is the proportion of blade to handle. Yeah. And Fitch has nailed this. I, I have a little philosophy that says you need to be 85% or better, and this is like 95% yeah. of, of blade to handle. And yeah. when you look at it closed because of its open pillar construction, I mean, it goes as far as it can go safely. And it does so safely, but it is almost as long. It's almost you know, yeah. almost the exact same length as the handle. And I really like that proportion. So they did a great job here. And I'm really digging that pocket clip. That's the first time they've done Look at that, that exact pocket That's clip. That's a great point. Um, titanium. That, it's titanium, mm -hmm. clearly titanium. Yeah. And, and that's the wood version right there. Um, so we've got the resin. We've got the red bone. And then uh, the uh, what looks like uh, some here. sort of uh, we go. curly birch or... Yeah, Something like that. That's exactly so what it looks like. And yeah. look at the brush, the brush yeah. finish. You know, sometimes the light can be a bit harsh, but when you see this in person, the brush finish is a really nice touch. And I also love that. Of course, they have a special sticker for each one of their knives. This is the Roadrunner, um, but they also ship all of their knives with a band aid. Who needs band aids? Every single one of their knives comes with a band aid. Yeah, I I cut my stuff my, myself on <laughs> my a stealth. my stealth <laughs> on a cold steel right there yesterday, um, and it's an actual band aid. Like, yeah, it's band aid a brand. Band -Aid yeah. brand. Yeah. Are you kidding? That's great. But yeah, so and I mean that's absolutely necessary because like I said, I cut myself on a cold steel doing a video. Switch uh, if it hasn't come out yet, you guys will see. Actually, it's it's already been out, so you've already seen it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's it's embarrassing, but. As, I've done as it. Much I've as, cut myself on camera. As it, much as we handle knives, it's going to happen. Law if you're of not averages. you're cutting yourself, you're not handling knives off. Exactly. Enough, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's why gun safety is so important, because the more you handle guns, you shouldn't be shooting yourself. Ever, right. Ever. Right? There's an exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> I shoot TC. Let's get this right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, he does. And that's not happening again. Um, and as far as... Mm, new products. Um, we've got some new Rough Riders. Now, we do have uh, some new Rough Rider reserves that we're going to be featuring in a separate video. Um, we've also got some queen, new Queen knives that we're going to be featuring. That's our in-house brand now. Um, but these are uh, some more new Rough Riders that people have been talking about and been wanting. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people online have already seen these, but we've got the Bumblebee and the Baby Bee in. And... Uh, these are really, really cool. Uh, assisted opening, and these have been insanely popular, especially for the price. It's um, funny that it's called the Bumblebee because it's a chunky little dude. Yeah, yeah. Just like a Bumblebee. Absolutely. And this is assisted. Yes. And so it pops right it, out. Oh, gosh, yes. And um, look at the, dare I say, Microtech-esque black. <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> lay it out in the comments um but yeah that's that's i like the black with the the silver i yeah. think that that's kind of yeah. we we call it grailish at the clip point meaning oh, okay they have features that only grail knives usually have right. which is two tone blades you yeah. know a lot of times you get that but it actually is executed well yeah one of the things i noticed a little detail is 
just a little brass insert for the lanyard. Yeah. But that was a nice little touch. Absolutely. It pops good with the uh, with the green. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And this fits right in there with uh, the Wasp series that we came out with, with uh, the Rough Rider Traditionals. And then, of course, the Baby Bee, the Spite here. Um, and that thing, <laughs> it pops out there. They're so good. It's so aggressive. It's a little penguin. It is. It's a little penguin. It's exactly. Aggressive. And uh, this one also has that uh, that brass lanyard tube right there as well. It does. Um, I'll be doggone. Yeah. I love little details, and and I know they're minor things, but when you get stuff in hand, it makes it feel special. Yeah. Right. Um, really digging those. So uh, the bumblebee is coming in at twelve ninety nine. Uh, the baby bee is coming in at nine ninety nine. So for Useful everyday knives and they're brushed. Look yeah, it's brushed. It's yeah, brushed finish, guys. Are you kidding? You That's can't awesome. beat that. Yeah, you can't beat that deal. Yeah. So. Wow, it's so aggressive. Neat. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is our picks. Our picks. First up is budget picks. Mm-hmm. What have you got for your budget pick, okay. Greg? So, you know, I, so here's the deal. Um, I got into these little bail knives because I attach a little lanyard to them and throw them in a vest pocket. Yep. And I don't have to search exactly. for the knife. And they're, they're underrated. And look, in a hawk bill, how cool is yeah. that? And this is a Baron Sun, okay, which is really nice. Um, made, is it Jacksonville? Jacksonville, Alabama, yep. yeah. And made in USA. This is just a cool, cool knife. I love hawkbill uh, shapes, and the it has a nice texture on the plastic. It doesn't feel chintzy. It's actually kind of sturdy. Yeah. It has a half stop. What? That's it's crazy. A half stop for a budget knife under twenty five bucks, and the grind looks good. I just love hawkbill. I like a little bail. I mean, believe it or not, when you when you haven't had a bail knife. And you haven't had a lanyard on it, you just yeah. don't know what you're missing. So. Exactly, and, and that's one thing I love about like all of the uh, the old like military multi tools, the U.S. Uh, the, and we've got them um, the GI knives. Um, mm-hmm. We've got them in the marbles. Um, have the bales on them. I love them. My first case knife that I bought for myself as a child was one of the old case electrician's knives. Oh, it has the bail yes. on the back end of it, and I've all, I've always loved it for that simple fact. I yes. could put a lanyard on it, I could put a carabiner on it, and it was super easy to keep track of. And because it's what twenty three bucks, this I don't even twenty two ninety nine, right? Twenty two ninety nine can't beat that. Talk about you can't a, beat that. This is you know what USA made. As crazy as I am. I would put this on a backpack with a lanyard like yep. dangle out there in the world. Like Absolutely. What difference does it make? And then take it off the uh, the lanyard or whatever or the, um, you know, what are those? Carabiner. Carabiners, right? yeah. Put on a carabiner. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so. And, and the finish work is really, really good. Yeah. And, oh, also, this is what's nice about Hawkbill Designs is if, you know, if you're having a little struggle to get that nail nick on a little firmness of a slip joint yep. like this, it, you can pinch it. Yeah, it, it actually has enough blade it, it's, width it's there because uh, because it humps like that. You so. know, we talk about easy opens, but it is like the true easy open. It really is um, because it doesn't need that cutout. It just it just is. It's a working man's knife. It's yeah. probably um, not thought of as much, and so I thought it'd be kind of neat to check yeah. it out. If you're cutting boxes or opening packages, especially uh, packages that don't have super sensitive stuff inside that you worry right. about the depth, but you just want to skim that box open this yeah. will do it well so absolutely yeah. i was excited to see that yeah well what i ended you? up going with um one of our new knives one of our new queen city knives wow. and um this one has a has a really cool story so this is one of our new slim trappers it's a slim line trapper pattern um in our queen brand which is our house brand now mm-hmm. uh we own that and um Put that it one up slim. close right there. It is very slim. Yeah. And this, if you're wondering about these handles, that is winter bottom bone. And I'm going to actually touch on that uh, a little bit more in the video that we cover these in depth with. But That's the really school. cool, th- yeah, it's people probably have never heard of school. that. Yeah, yes. a lot of a lot of younger people have never heard of it. But old knife collectors will know that and know that term. And that's why 
Like I the really Shat think Morgan brands, yeah. you know, the old Queen brand. Yep, absolutely. And so originally created by Samuel Winterbottom, and he built his business in the late 1800s and early 1900s uh, with this Winterbottom bone in uh, in Pennsylvania. And uh, Queen actually became one of his biggest contracts that helped him grow his business, and they ended up buying a lot of this Winterbottom bone and outfitting not just pocket knives but kitchen knives and uh, table cutlery and stuff like that with it. And it became really iconic, and they ended up buying it you know, through the beginning of World War II, and it, it became synonymous with you know, being highly sought after from collectors. So this is a nice nod to that, actual bone handles with that winter bottom finish, um, paying homage to the original Queen Knives. And that one's coming in at seventeen ninety nine. Nice. Seventeen ninety nine. Half stops, four forty C stainless, um, clip point spay blade, slimline trapper. Um, just a beautiful pattern. I'm really digging that, and I think uh, I think our designers uh, have done a phenomenal job with those. So awesome. that's my budget pick. Up next, mid grade. We've got mid range picks. <laughs> Okay, so before I show it, how much is this thing again? 80, do I have the price? Oh, it's not even 80. It's, uh, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. 79.99. Yeah. 79.99. So this is a, a really, really neat blade because the kickstart is is a nice kind of a trapper from Case that has, yeah. you know, the you know assisted feature. Right. With a pocket clip. So you get a traditional design with a pocket clip and I, like I was talking about earlier I, I really enjoy that now this is the Zippo series what's really cool is made by Case of course and I believe they are the same company now yes yes, yes. Okay. Zippo owns Case um, and so they made these uh, the end of last year and um, the thing is right now we are the only ones that have these and don't know if there's going to be any more of them at yeah. all so yeah, exactly yeah. Um, they did it as a test run, and uh, it's a nice celebration of the yeah. coming of the two brands. I think it's an opportunity that everybody needs to jump in on. Yeah. So hopefully after this video, maybe they'll be sold out. But it's a great value, and here's why: because it's a manual folder, but it is the same design as that Kickstart for significantly less. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just a great value, and I love the Kieranite, the red, white, and blue. Just a beautiful blade, and yeah. uh, and the pocket and the pocket clip. clip. God, are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually in here last week, and there was a, a gentleman, um, blue collar guy. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for good working knife. I want a case, and I said, okay, cool. I said, have you seen that Kickstart, man? I have, and we both held it together. And he's like, man, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into getting that. And I wish I had seen this because he might have gone ahead and pulled the trigger on yeah. this guy had he seen that because he really liked the design. Yeah, it wasn't sure the auto or the assisted feature. He just liked the design, so right. Yeah, great, I, I great love knife. that one, and I love having a thumb stud on a on a traditional folder like that. Absolutely, um, and a liner lock. I, I think it's. I think that's a really cool pick. Yeah. Really, I love really it. good working knife. I love everything about it. So, my mid range pick um, comes in at eighty nine ninety nine. Right now, as of the filming of this, it's on sale for seventy eight ninety nine online, um, but it's eighty nine ninety nine. Um, and this, I think, is the best value we have in the store for a modern folder. It is the Kershaw Link. It's USA made. Mm -hmm. It is assisted opening. Yep. And it's CPM 20 CV for under 90 bucks. Listen, I got the bare knuckle, um, which was an SMKW exclusive in 20 CV. And I got that, and I think it was over a little over 100 bucks. Yeah. And this is a very similar knife to that. Yep. What a what a great value for twenty CV American made. Yeah, yeah. And Kershaw, sorry, I'm gonna take it from you. Absolutely, so I want to yeah. handle it. Liner lock, mm -hmm. assisted. Three point two five inches on that stone wash finish, twenty yeah. CV blade, and I mean it's deep just, pocket. Yep, deep pocket carry, um, reversible pocket clip, aluminum handles, sixty sixty one T six aluminum handles on that. Um, the the only thing is it is assisted opening so that's going to push some people away from it, it. Will. but it's 20 cv for under a hundred dollars you can't and we were talking about this before off camera 
I feel like still, even as old as it is, 20 CV is one of the top three blades, premium blade steels. Um, when you're talking about absolutely premium blade steels, you think M390, you think 20 CV. Um, now, and you know, it remains to be seen. Magna Cut's really new, but it might make a, a run for that kind of. I'm excited about Magna Cut. It yeah. has a lot of different features, and the fact that it's not totally stainless means you're not you good could potentially get some toughness. Yeah, could potentially get some edge retention out of it. That yeah, some of the others can't do. I'll tell you this about 20 CV, and I sharpen all my knives myself. Is 20 CV really takes a fine edge? Yeah, it does. It really and does. it's not hard to do. One of the nice things about this, too, is the way that it's ground with kind of that half flat grind. Yeah. That The cross section's so narrow. This is slicey dicey, mm -hmm. you know. So for your EDC task, you're going to enjoy this knife. Yeah, absolutely. Really well. Good choice. I think that's uh, – And that, I love green. Yeah. It's different. Yep. Yeah. That OD green, yep. especially on aluminum handles, really dig that one. So. Yeah, me too. Next up is our high-end picks. Oh, boy. So be a heretic. Buy an expensive knife. <laughs> I like that. That's their brand. Yeah. And that's this is what heretic does. This is the uh, Medusa, right? Yeah. All right, Super Greg, uh, what is this called again? It's purple camo? Purple camo is what they're calling it. Okay. Yep, absolutely. It, his tie. it does. It does. And I've got a thing for purple, guys. Real men wear purple. That's a fact. Purple is color royalty. Yep. And I enjoy that color quite a bit. Um, probably, I don't know. Was it did uh, the Stallone movie Cobra, where he had the forty nine oh, yeah. Merc? Wasn't that purple or was it? No, it was, was silver. It? Was it okay? Yeah, I do. Well, a lot of forty nine Mercs are yeah, purple. Exactly. A lot of them. Yeah. Are, and they're like kind of like an eggplant color. And I think as a kid, when I got into that, and I really liked the the forty nine Merc, you know, yeah. that smooth design with purple kind of got to me. But listen, I love that movie too, especially yes. with the flames shooting out the yes. side. I wanted so bad to make my first car shoot flames. <laughs> oh my gosh! I was like, I was researching, trying to figure out. I was like, I can put a spark plug in exactly. there, and I can wire it to this. Yeah. And, how, how do I make it run rich? Yep. Yeah, it'll be a lot slower, but a lot cooler. <laughs> it's going to look awesome. Cruising. Yeah, no doubt. But this is... So, look, here's the thing. Um, it's hard to beat a ProTech when it comes to its action. ProTech is number one in yeah. my book. But let me tell you, that's ProTech-esque. And that's a really good action. It's lightweight. You know, it, it has such a thin edge. I just like how slicey it is. Yeah. But this, I, I really like the Heretic brand. And, you know, this is um, Tony Marfion's son. Mm -hmm. And he makes his knives out of Florida. And I just enjoy, I enjoy their brand. One of the best things, it's a small detail, but these pocket clip details is the ceramic yes. ball. Yes. Are you kidding? So it doesn't tear up your clothes. Yes, but it's tight. So it's yeah. really, really tight. But the ceramic ball also looks good, and it feels good in the pocket. So this yep. is a great knife. High end. How much is this? Five ninety five. So just a hair under six hundred bucks, and I'm sure that is some kind of DLC PVD L Max, whatever that is. Um, but it's yeah, yeah, and it's L Max always. You know, and that's oh look, look at that. Look at yep. the stops are brass, mm -hmm. and this little open pillar you can see. So I can get some light on that. You can see the brass right here. The uh, blade stop, I won't be able to see that on camera. Uh, the blade stop is also a brass pin. I love that. I yeah. love the details. Absolutely. Oh, look, and they bronze the, the, uh, uh, the screw. The screw for the, for pocket, the clip. pocket clip, yep. So this is another reason that you have to come. If you're going to invest in a knife like this and you want to see what's the hype all about, is it all hype? you got to come to the store. You, you come here, you make the trip. It's a fun place to vacation anyway. You've got the mountains. You're going to have water parks for kids. There's like three yep. or four hotels, uh, maybe more. Dollywood. you got so much here. You really need to come down and, and pick out your grail knife. And this is truly a grail knife. It's something that you can keep. Yeah. It works. And when you were talking about so the details. action on that, and I, you mentioned how lightweight that knife is because of the carbon fiber. They've really dialed in the action because – when a knife gets that lightweight and you're slinging that steel blade open. out there, that's a great point. 
it, you really have to dial that in because yes. if you flip it too hard, it it could pop out of your hand. We, I mean, you felt knives that do that. Uh, yes, um, I think one of the ones um, actually is the little the little tiny Kershaw automatic. Yeah, um, yeah, that little thing. Like if, this little assisted has got some buzz. Let me tell you that Kershaw. I forget oh, which God. one it is, but that little tiny thing, it will almost flip out of your hand. It, I mean, they pop so hard, yeah. but when you this get that ratio well. just right, that's a great point. Um, great point. It, it, it really shows. I mean, that just again goes back to that attention to detail. Yeah. Um, so, and I love those Medusa patterns. Yeah, love me too. those Medusa patterns. My last pick, my high end pick. Um, and I've been fawning over this since day one. Since they first announced it, I, I didn't even I, I didn't even have why. it in hand, and that's the uh, the Spyderco stovepipe. And you know, this one's been received online with a lot of love and a lot of hate too. Yeah, okay, why? Um, well, a lot of people are saying, "Well, that's a production knife. That's a Spyderco. Why would you pay that much money?" For a production, it comes in at what four twenty five? Is that right? Oh, I oh, oh I see. Yeah, kind of, kind of four twenty. Four twenty. So it's mainly yep. the price for a production Spyderco knife, but you got to look at what we're talking about here. So, and I, I liken this to more similar to a mid tech type knife, yes, um, and more along the lines of you know like a McNeese custom or something like that. When it's um, gone, it's gone. And you're talking, you, you got to look at materials. Mm -hmm. You got to look at craftsmanship. You got to look again to the details. I mean, this thing is uh, extremely fine tuned, um, very high end materials. You're talking titanium across the board on all of these handle pieces. And uh, that's a two piece handle construction right there. Um, so the backspacer is actually made into one of the handle pieces there. And oh, then you've got the pocket yeah, clip. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking 20 CV on the blade steel. I love 20 CV. Um, so that's, you know, a reoccurring theme in today's show. Um, and then that blade shape. It's just, I mean, it looks almost like a rhino. Yes, that's, um, that's but, what harkened to me was yeah. a rhino. It absolutely, we, we call this at the clip point functional fantasy. Yeah. It's got those fantasy elements, but it's very functional yeah. with the thumb groove at the top. Yeah. I mean, it just it fits in hand so well. Hollow ground. With it's that hollow grind, sharp. it's super slicey sharp. It's ridiculous. Um, and I just I really love this knife. And I think with the materials and with how well it's built and how well it's made, it's absolutely worth that price. I mean, you look at uh, other knives in that same line coming from that same factory are knives like the Spidey Chef. Yes. And they're coming in with the same materials, but they're not uh, – the detail work is not as no, difficult to do. No, you don't have the do. mid-tech level design yeah, either. Exactly. Right? And so – And this uh, is not going to be a knife that's always made. No. You know what I mean? No. These special edition knives like that, yeah. they, they definitely carry a premium. But in a few years, you're going to be like, you know – I wish I had that knife. Yep. I miss that knife. Wonder if I can find one in the secondary market. Be a lot more than you're not helping me right now. You're not. You're not helping me. Right. Something we haven't done in a long time. Yes. What's in your pocket? What's in my pocket? What's in your pocket? <sighs> All right. What's in my pocket? Pocket dump time. It's almost like a challenge. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um. So I've got a couple of knives. Um. A couple of really interesting ones. We mentioned Protec earlier. Um. Uh, I've got my Protec. Oh, now you've heard him. <laughs> We've got my ProTech Chibata there. Um, Blackie Collins design, first production run. This is number 644. Um, uh, wow. And that's that's one of my favorites right there. Are you kidding me? Um, that's epic. So we, uh, what's funny about this one is it's a gravity lock. We sold this one originally, and then it kept coming back. We, we kept selling it. And so um, Jennifer Parker that does our... Um, our old collection. She buys mm -hmm. um, used knives and antique knives and stuff like that. She brought it to me one day and she said, can you do a video on this showing how it works? Because I keep getting it back. People thinking it's broke and they don't know how it works. Um, so it is a gravity lock to disengage the gravity. You just press the blade in. You can hear it click right there. That's the lock falling out of position. And then the blade pops open. Right there is what it engages with. So 
to close it and lock like if you just close it it will not lock like that you have to either turn it upside down cool. and it falls into place or as you close it you can close it and engage the safety there on that side you got to get some of that sound in there do do the gravity do, do, do the gravity on my mic do the- And then, yep, there it went. yep, epic. Yeah, so that's uh, and the ergos and designs a Blackie Collins design. It's perfect. It's yeah, got the coffin shaped handle. Oh, hold on a second. That's right. And then the uh, yeah, the swedge, dude. I know. I fell in love with it the first time you showed me. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's my baby right there. I love that one. And then I've also got, um, I've got a couple of them right now. I've got my Rough Rider Reserve, the new um, Triple R. Yeah, big old clasp. 14. Actually, you know what I like about this, too? The clasp isn't overclasped. Yeah. Like, if you look at those big bulldog clasp knives, they're like a hand and a half. And this is a realistic knife. Yeah. Kind of Navaja. I don't know what that would be. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like that. Half stop. Look at that. Yep. These Rough Rider Reserves are so nice, guys. And the only other one I've got is my uh, actual Old Queen. Um, and uh, this one is from uh, Titusville, Pennsylvania, mm. D2. And this is my uh, equestrian tool. So I actually use this one. This is an, uh, this is a mid-2000s Queen. Um, and I actually use this one. Um, got the Curly Birch. I think that's Curly Birch Handles. Um and D2 tool steel, clip point blade, equestrian tool, and it's got the the awl, the reamer, punch. So that's uh, and that's a user for me. Yes. I've got a couple of queens and some Shat and Morgans. Yeah. Yeah, man. That survived Boy Scout weekend. Nice. So this is Greg's, uh, our Greg's. Super Greg. Super Greg's carry right here and that's the new marbles mr600 vg10 brass handles um beautiful beautiful lockback design that's the kind of knife that you can throw at something open and close and it's going to have about the same result (laughs) exactly (laughs) just 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 yeah just curl this you know you want to get a quick pump you know definitely yeet approved yeah Cool. Very, very cool. So what have you got in your pocket? Oh me. Um let's see. Let's start let's start let's start with the with the vest pocket. So this is a little some little G E C action that I can thank nice. Super Greg for making sure I had the opportunity to receive. So kudos. I appreciate that. I asked you, hey, I'm looking for a stag and he found me one. Look at this. Very nice. And the uh, what I really like about GEC knives is fit and finish. But, you know, when you get this, look look at how it has the hollow mm-hmm. section. Like, yep. I love that. So just a cool little vest pocket knife, and the execution is awesome. I love that slip, too. Yep, absolutely. Had a, a guy on uh, Instagram who I met through the social media platform and said, hey, um, I see you're making some of these. Can you make me one this size? And he did. So nice. Yeah, yeah. People getting out there doing that. It's fun. Um, then the other vest pocket. So we have the wallet. Oh, hang on. Probably shouldn't put that out there. It might be some cards showing. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the slim wallet. And um, so check this out. So this is an old Kershaw. Yeah. And they're 3000 series. This is. So this is a lever lock that they made um, for really the European market, but they sold it here too. And this is a, just a – I just love the 90s. and I haven't seen one of those era. in forever. And if you're, if you're really slick, you can actually oh. flick it open. Wow. Yes. So it was a budget knife back in the day, but I actually found that in Denmark. And was like, wow, somebody's selling old Kershaw knives in Denmark. And, yeah, I got that. And, and uh, there you go. Oh, That's I almost it. got it. Yeah, it takes a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. You can flick it. That is so cool. Yes. 
It really is. And Kershaw has shared my posts on that. They and people have commented, gosh, Kershaw, you know, bring back some of the old knives. This would be neat if they could figure out a way, um, kind of like how CRKT does that takedown lever. Yep. Like they could maybe do a take on a modern version of that. Yeah. You know, this is obviously like injection molded plastic, but um, yeah. It was uh, Kershaw made in Japan, which was really cool for me. Yeah, because you know knives aren't really made in Japan anymore. Right, kitchen knives are, but not so much. Yeah. Um, well, and you'll notice knives. that's got that uh, KAI stamp on it as well, it which does. indicates the uh, the Japan yes, manufacturing exactly. So, yeah, kind of a cool little hidden blade knife there, and I can carry that too. But um, nice. and then I've got to, of course, wrap. My SMKW exclusive Medford Swift Praetorian yes. there. Yes. An S45 VN, right? That so, is beautiful. Yep. And, and I love those green handles. See, and, and this is once again another plug for coming into the store and handling these knives is the green actually has, like, you could tell when they did whatever they painted or anodized it, mm -hmm. they must have started off with black because you can pick up some of the black underneath it. So it actually seems to have like layers to it, but it's like black right. and some green. So yeah, just a, a very, very cool knife with my little funky lanyard, you know, I've got to do what I've got to do. But oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then for the only thing I have that can compete with your Blackie Collins Pro Tech, and we'll just go there. So nice. That's a knife. Right, so that is beautiful. Yeah, so you have a beautiful Medford here with all the grind lines, full titanium. So, and I've always said I love the, the grind work on Medfords. Yeah, the grind work is phenomenal. So, and, and it's hard to see on camera, but this actually is a purple and gray anodized. So it does have the purple that I like, and it has. Uh, you know, I put a little purple lanyard and actually anodized the beads myself, and it has a little bit of blurple there. So, yeah, kind of goes with my my color themes, but that's that's the tactical option that I carry yeah. for Medford. So, because this is obviously more of an EDC style blade. Um, oh, and we're not done. <clears throat> I knew it was coming. Obviously, <laughs> no, I do this every day. So this is the little Baton yes. 3, and Olight makes the coolest stuff. And this is blue to purple, so it's got that blurple feel. Uh, love this. And it comes with a little charging base uh -huh. that you can throw in the backpack. You pop it in, keeps it charged, pop it out and carry it all day, put it back in its charger. Um, Olight just has some cool stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's my little EDC flashlight to go along with. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate, and this dude is bright. Yes. So, yeah. I, I I really dig Olight stuff. They've done a phenomenal job also making stuff very customizable and very unique, yes. um, especially with their, their online market, making stuff like special editions and, and special runs like that. Um, they've done a phenomenal job with that. Yeah, they really so. have. Well, folks, that's about it. And today it's been TC... And, and Clip Greg. Point Greg. Right. Clip yes, point sir. Greg. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Greg from the Clip Point. So be sure to follow him. Now, Thanks, go ahead and give the rundown on um, the handles for all of the social media. Yeah, so it's the Clip Point on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. It's just that simple. The Clip Point. Just a play on the word. It's our favorite blade shape, the Clip yep. Point. And every time I do a Tonto, not every time, but sometimes I do a Tonto post, and it's like, you don't do any clip points on your name is the clip point. I'm like, well, I do, but I like it all, right? So <laughs> expect to see a little bit of everything. It's not just clip points, but because we have shot some videos and we kind of do that on YouTube, the clip point is in video clips. So. Right. Yep, absolutely. Nice. Check us out. Yeah, we, we try and engage at a really, really high level with everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, just just enjoy the community. We're really fans for Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Same here. And, folks... Remember, if it cuts, like everything here at SNKW, then we definitely carry it. <laughs>
All right. So. It's okay. TC answers when I call, so it's not a problem. 